Salute to Knicks Nation, CP the Franchise here. You know, a lot of you guys DM me and, and let me know how much Knicks Fan TV means to you, how much it's gotten you through a tough time, especially during the pandemic. Some of you even DM me and said that you, you were depressed, you were going through a lot of anxiety, and the show really helped you get through a, a tough spot in your life. And so regardless of if, if you've been clinically diagnosed with depression or anxiety, or you're just somebody who's just looking to get your life back on the right track, therapy can really give you the tools to approach your life in a different way. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more accessible and more affordable. And that's very important because in today's day and age, it's very difficult to find a therapy that you like in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online. It's remote, and by filling out a simple questionnaire and a couple of questions, BetterHelp can match you with a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. Try it out using the link below. That's BetterHelp.com slash KnicksFanTV, and they will give you $10 off your first month. And because finding a therapist is a little bit like dating, sometimes it can be hard, and sometimes you pick one that you don't like, have no fear because because with BetterHelp, you can switch and find the therapist that works best for you without stressing about insurance or who's in your network or anything like that. And as I said before, it doesn't mean that you've got something wrong with you. It just means that you could be looking to get your life back on track. I've taken therapy before, and it's helped me in droves in terms of getting my life in order and, and getting back on the right track. So I highly recommend it. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the video description or just go to betterhelp.com slash KnicksFanTV for $10 off your first month. All right. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Monday evening. Another edition of Knicks KFTV Post Game Live presented by Manscaped on tonight's episode. Man, Knicks going to Boston. With a three-game winning streak. No R.J. Barrett in this game. And after the first half, you thought, you know what? Knicks are going to be in for a ride. But they were in for a wild ride. Because in the second half, the Boston Celtics would turn up the Jets, man. Defensively locked in. And offensively, their big gunners took them home. Jason Tatum, 35 points. Knicks had no answer for Tatum. And Boston would run away with this thing in the second and the fourth quarter. 114 to 98. And for me, first and foremost, the main storyline here was RJ Barrett out with a migraine. Out with a migraine. You be the judge. Uh, but, you know, Knicks missing their best player, their hottest player right now. And that was a tough one going into Boston. You know, is it a migraine? Is it resting the knee on a back-to-back? I'll let you guys be the judge of it. But I'm putting my tinfoil hat on with this one. You know, migraine. We'll see. Time will tell. But either way, they went in there with Josh Hart in the starting unit. And look, in the beginning of the game, things were clicking for the Knicks. I I thought things were looking really good. Ball movement, very good. Thought Jalen and Julius set a really good tone. Jalen Brunson out the gate was just cooking. They had Jalen Brown start off the game on him. Drew Holiday started off on on um, on Julius Randle. And then they had Derek White roaming between Josh Hart and, and Quentin Grimes. And in the beginning, Jalen Brunson was going to work. He was getting into his bag. I thought Julius did a good job both facilitating and scoring, being a, being aggressive on both ends of the court. And thing, things were looking good. Knicks were knocking down their threes. And things were looking really good. <laughs> things were looking really good. However, the end of the half got a little chaotic. You know, Brunson knocked down his shot near the end. And then Jalen Brown would finish the half with the three of his own. And then in the second half, it was mostly Boston. Third quarter was not crisp for the, for the Knicks. I did not like how they, how they executed in the third. Six turnovers in the third. And they had four in the first half. Six in the third quarter alone. So I thought that was a combination of Boston really locking in defensively and the Knicks just really settling, not getting into their offense quick enough, holding on to the ball too much, and just making a lot of boneheaded plays on both ends of the floor, but offensively and defensively, some bad fouls as well. Uh, Boston's bench hurt them. You had Sam Hauser, Doogie Hauser's brother, killing him again, four for six from downtown for, for young Sam Hauser, 12 points for him off the bench. And then in the fourth, 
It was Tatum time. It was Jason Tatum time just destroying the Knicks, getting into his bag. 35 points for Tatum. They had Josh Hart uh, checking him. He was shooting right over Josh Hart. Knicks need a wing. No wing presence out there. And the Knicks got exposed. But look, in the second half, when you have superstars like that who can get into their bag, there's really nothing you can do. And that was Jason Tatum. And a lot of the contested shots that Boston was missing in the first half, they made them. They, they made him in the second half and in the fourth quarter, and, and a lot of that was Jason Tatum. He just made a lot of tough shots, but that's what superstars do. That's what superstars do. And before you knew it, it got over. It was over early for the Knicks, 114-98. to 98. So we go 5-5 five and five through, the, through the 10. Couldn't get to 6-4. and four. We go 5-5 five and five through 10. You know, tough. I would have wanted this one, but not terrible. Through a tough schedule through 10 games. But I did want this one. Not going to lie to you guys. You know, we came out of probably the hardest uh, 10 game stretch of anybody in the season. And, you know, we came out with the 500 record. So that's always valid. You know, there were a lot of games that we were real tight with. We were tight with the Celtics that first game. We were tight with the Cavs. Um. So, you know, I don't really think the record indicates how good this team is or how good we're going to be. But one thing is really, really obvious to me. And it's that um, while R.J. Barrett may not be the best player on this team yet, I'm going to say yet. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of respect for you, Brunson. So I'm not going to do you like that. Mm -hmm. I think that right now, I think he's the most important one to our offense. Uh, when I'm seeing the yeah. Knicks uh, trying to get the ball across half court and I'm seeing Josh Hart and Dante DiVincenzo with the ball in their hands to initiate a play. And next thing you know, we got seven seconds left on the shot clock and nobody's even got to look at the rim yet. That's how I know you yeah. know this this offense yeah. is stagnant. Stag- like I would. I will credit the Celtics because you know the Celtics are really really tough team defensively. They have a, they have like a lot of really good wings, a lot of uh really good defensive players and you got to give them credit. But at the same time, the Knicks are lagging when initiating the offense. I'm seeing uh even Brunson walking the ball up with just a little he's a little bit too lax quickly sometimes. He's not yeah. really he's taking his time a little bit too much. I understand that the Knicks are a half court team, but yeah, but really they, sh- they shouldn't be. They got to be playing faster. That's that's yeah. the problem. They they have to be playing faster. Um, but it's just you know they can never put it together consistently. You're absolutely. I think you're absolutely right in that because if you look at the players we got, um, quickly is great in in the open court. He usually makes good decisions. Randall, he's a bulldozer. He could definitely make some damage down there if he hustles. Uh, we know RJ is one of the uh, better fast break players in the NBA. That should really be the style of offense we're aiming for. And with RJ, the offense just flows better. I feel like we've got more tempo. I feel like, uh, you know, he gives us a little bit more spacing the way that he's been shooting lately, even though Hart was shooting it pretty well tonight. And so was Grimes. Um, I just really think we need RJ and his team uh, for everything to come together offensively. Oh man, what's good, CP? Uh, how, how's, how, how are you doing today, bro? How are you feeling? Oh uh, uh, man, you know... I wanted this one, man. You, you, you heard me yesterday. You heard my tone. I wanted this one yesterday. It's very. And, this game and, was. So and had we had RJ, I think we might have gotten this one. I agree wholeheartedly. It's really crazy how different this team looks without RJ, yeah. man. In the three games that he's missed, this team just reverts back to that heavy isolation, rely on Julius and Brunson and. Man, this team, it was looking, it started to look ugly towards the end of the second, but it really looked ugly in the third quarter. That's when the game was just lost. And we had, what, like two, three shot clock violations? That was just, yeah. We, we were just holding on to the rock way too long, man. A lot of indecisiveness on offense. Celtics were doing a good job at just protecting the rim and forcing Julius to make tough decisions. And then, and everybody else, man, like even Josh Hart, there were some uncharacteristic defensive plays, but. Whew, this yeah, was, the four point this play was against annoying, Tatum. Man. This was, was a very was, annoying loss. The four point play against Tatum was inexcusable. You, you can't have that, man. And then to try to go one on one, to go against the entire Celtics team in transition, we didn't need that, CP. Yeah. We did not need that at all. 
Well, that's but, the thing. That, that's the thing because in the half court, it gets so hectic for him. He tried to force the issue, make a play, you know? Yeah, it was tough, man. I really hate it. It's like I was with my boy. You know, he's just an NBA aficionado. He had no he had no skin in the game. Mm, but okay. he <clears throat> he's watching this game. He just wanted to see how the Knicks w- would play. He wanted to see how Brunson and Randall fare in live action against the Celtics, the Celtics team. And then in the third quarter, man, as soon as the as soon as it became a 10 point lead, I told him uh, th- this game got out of hand. He's like, it's only a 10 point lead. I was like, not against this team. Not against this team. Not the way that these two teams play against each other, man. This These games are always tight. Yeah. And yeah. each possession matters. Each shot counts. When they started missing their shots, I was like, ah, this is all over. And then Tatum starts hitting all these crazy threes yeah. from downtown. Yeah. Man, I, I, I could, I, there's so many, there's so many issues to go all around where you can't really, I thought Mitch did an okay job, but it was yeah. like, Porzingis is just too tough, man. Yeah. Seven for eleven from the field, three or six from downtown. That was a tough matchup for Mitch yet again. You have Randall losing his composure at, at moments throughout the game. All you were relying on is Brunson. You have Quentin Grimes, who's timid to shoot when he gets the ball in his hands. He's looking to always pass it up. And then the bench just did not have that impact. I was looking for Emmanuel quickly to step up tonight, CP. I was looking yeah. for Quick to step up. And, yeah. and he just did it, man. One for ten. One for ten tonight. You needed quick to be that guy who's needed, dancing needed on the with on no the, with on, no on RJ. The... You needed somebody to pick up that production, and quick will quick didn't have it tonight. Yeah, and, and with that, and but you and you needed quick. One for ten is inexcusable, man. Yeah. I'm not like I I get that he got to the free throw line, knocked down all four of his free throws, but still, one for ten is inexcusable, especially on a night like tonight. But then I also got to look at the head coach because there are some questionable rotations, man. Questionable, like. Yeah. Josh Hart getting 43 minutes, I get it that he was in his rhythm for for parts of the game, especially in the first half, but we needed more shooting. You take out Grimes, who just hit three threes in a row, and then it's like, where did he go? Yeah. He's more than a capable defender. And then I thought, like, ugh, that it's just stuff like that, man. Stuff like that that just got under my skin, and it was just really annoying to watch uh, just the Celtics come out with this win, especially when you get just... Ugh, the Boston fans. Man. Yeah, tough loss, but uh, we'll, we'll bounce back. Five and five through ten. Time to keep it pushing. RJ, we need you. CP the franchise. I'm out of here. Great.